when your beers are due And you don't know what you're going to do You have to stand on the And you have to look towards the enemy and tell him this Thank you for one more day, Lord God. We need your blessings. Glory, we need your honor, Lord God. But we honor you in this service this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you all that is due unto your holy and righteous name, God. But you are worthy. You are hallelujah. You are hallelujah. You are hallelujah worthy of all the praise. All the glory belongs to you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Come and sup with us. Hallelujah. As we enter to your course of we praise, on our lips praise God. Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, sing this old song like this. Then I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Y'all sing. on the battlefield. You ought to fight on. Hallelujah. Fight on. Fight a good fight. A uh, good fight of faith, the Bible says. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, come on, y'all. Sean said, come on, bless the Lord.
Somebody said he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Somebody say you're good, Lord. You're You are 
Somebody say all the time is good. Say what you want. 
Hopelessness, pain, and despair. Know that God has already made a way. Yes, He has. Amen. He's just preparing you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. And now a triumphant message from our pastor. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Amen. He's worthy of all of the glory and of all of the praise. Amen. Amen. We thank God this morning for his grace, for his mercy. And we thank him for being in our presence on this day. As we come before you, we like to welcome those who are watching by the airwaves of Facebook. We hope and pray that you are well, that you are guarded by the grace of God and his mercy, and that you're living out the investment of what he's placed upon you and given to you in this day and this season. Our God is a great God. And the songwriters say he's worthy to be praised. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that he desires our praise. And he desires our worship. Amen. We are grateful this morning for your presence, for your attendance. And we are just thankful for you being in the house this morning, those who are present here in the sanctuary. But most importantly, those who are watching by the airways. We are grateful to God. Uh, that you're here this morning. You could have done something else, been somewhere else, but yet the Spirit of God led you to be in our presence and connect with us, and for that we are truly honorable and thankful for your presence on this day. Amen. Hallelujah. We just pray now that as we are moving in this day, as we prepare for this horrific storm that has been forecast to hit our area, I pray that you will guard yourself and protect yourself this day from all that could happen that we pray that God won't allow to happen and that no lives are lost in this time. But we ask that you use the wisdom of God in every situation. Make sure you follow the instructions to protect yourself and that you are able to see another day as this storm approaches. So we are praying for God's glory, his protection is being with you on this day tomorrow as we move further into the week. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you will, turn with me to the book of First Peter. Turn with me to the book of First Peter, the first chapter. Amen. First Peter, the first chapter. I want to look at several verses as the Spirit of God is leading me and has led me to this place this morning. Amen. First Peter chapter 1. I want to look at several verses here. I want to look at verse number 1, verse 6 and 7, and verse 15, and verse number 16. Again, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, verse 6 and verse number 7, and verse 15, and verse number 16. When you have it, I ask that you stand uh, with me in this place that we may read the word of God together and share the word of God together. Amen. I'm going to read it to you from out of the NIV version of God's holy word. 
And the word of God reads as follows. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so uh, that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater work than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, uh, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Uh, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Amen. Father, we ask now that you bless this word. We ask that you give the velocity of what you desire for it to empower your people with. Uh, that they won't leave the same way they came in. Uh, give them the fruit of your lips through my voice, through my hearts, through my ears, through my hands, through my eyes, and through my mouth, uh, that they, O oh God, would know that you're still God, and besides you there is none other. O oh God, use me as your instrument, as your ambassador, to proclaim your word this morning uh, between the living and the dead, that those who hear would know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And God, you are keeping your word that you promised you would never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us. And we are grateful this morning for those encouraging words that empowers our soul. We bless you now and we thank you for this opportunity. In Christ's name we pray. And all the believers say hallelujah. God be the glory. Now give him some praise in this place. Amen. Now if I ask you to give me some praise, then I would accept it. I say give God some praise in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of God himself. I want to speak from the thought this morning, pressed but not despaired. Pressed but not despaired. Turn to your neighbor that's sitting beside you and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, you may be pressed at the moment, but know that you're not despaired. That the God we serve has his hands upon your very life. So give him praise, give him honor, and give him glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are delighted this morning to be here because uh, my sisters and brothers in this life, Jesus has already warned us uh, that we're going to have some trials, and we're going to have some tribulations. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what's your position in life, you're going to face trials and you're going to face tribulation. Uh, but you must be of good cheer uh, because God has already, through Christ Jesus, overcome your situation. You must garner the spirit of joy and praise in all situations uh, because life is going to throw you curveballs after curveballs after curveballs and as you stand up at the plate in life you must swing the bat uh, don't allow the pitchers to come across the plate and hit the catcher's glove and the, the umpire calls you out because you gave up instead of pressing forward I'm encouraged this morning by this word and by this message because I understand in life uh, that there are some ups and there are some downs. There are some ins and there are some outs. 
There's some glory days and there's some days that we're not going to feel like getting up out of the bed. But through it all, God is still our God and he's still on the throne. Do I have any witness in this house? I just believe if we raise up a sacrifice of praise and give God his just due, God will bring us out quicker than if we didn't give him praise. We have to stay in there a little longer. Hallelujah, somebody. In life, oftentimes we find ourselves being in a transit form. We're moving from one place and entering to another. It's part of our requirement in growing and becoming what God has called for us to be. These multitude of issues and multitudes of concerns, your cataclysm, your catastrophes, and all of your calamities are designed by God to give us a hope for tomorrow because he's not a God that doesn't quit. So we should never quit. Hallelujah. In these moments, we feel if it's not one thing, there's something else going on in our lives. But yet, there's a contrast that can't be overlooked when we are in these places in the press. The contrast point to every trial isn't born because of sin, but God's authority may be revealed in you and I. Oh yeah, he's trying to teach us that although you may be going through, I got you covered. Even though you may go through some pains right now, I am blessing you. Even though your heart may be in a stage of aching and sheer desire, I want to give up, but I got your hands in my hands, and I got you covered, and you don't have to worry about where you are. All you have to do is look to me. I am the hill. I am the true rock of Gibraltar, and I brought you through those things, and I'm guaranteed to bring you through what you're facing right now. Oh, yeah, I'm encouraged this morning that no matter where we are, church, even in the midst of the storm, God has granted us peace. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I, I want to take a moment and just look at this hurricane Ida that's coming our way. Don't you know in the midst of the hurricane, there's a place of peace? It's called the eye because that's where God is. God is trying to teach us that if you would just keep me centered, if you would keep me focused, I'm right here with you. And no matter what's going on all around you, I got peace. In the midst of the storm, I get you covered while you're going through. Don't worry about the outer bounds. Be concerned about the inner bounds where I am. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad to know this morning that no matter where we are, God is right there with us. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's with you. Or talk to him like you're not afraid. Say, he's with you. Oh, yes, he is. Listen. We have to understand just because you're going through storms, it doesn't always mean that you have done something wrong. Oh, yeah, let me prove my point. In the book of John, chapter 9, verse 1 through verse number 3, uh, there's a man by the name of Celadonius. Oh, yeah, the Bible speaks of him in John, chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. And it says now about this man who was born blind, the scripture says, as they went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus responded, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in you. Oh, yeah, you need to understand something. God is going to do something great for you. God is about to turn your world upside down. God is about to show the world that no matter what you are going through, no matter where you are in life, he's about to use you as a beacon light that you can be blessed. Even in the midst of storm, even in the midst of you going through, I am right there with you. Oh, yeah. So I want you to be encouraged. Oh, yeah. Don't look at the storm. Look who's in the storm. Oh, yeah. 
Don't worry about how it looks to you. Just know he's right there with you. Oh, yeah. So many times in life, we ready to throw in the towel. We walk up to the ring, and we pick up the towel, and we ready to give up on God. But I want you to understand, don't throw in the towel just yet. You may be pressed. But understand, you are not in a state of despair. You may feel like you're hopeless, but don't give up on the hope in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is there with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So understand, being in the press is about proving your faith and him staying true to the call that is upon your life. These moments are presented to develop joy, strength of faith that enables you to rise up and keep on moving. Oh, yes, they are. I'm reminded of a quote by Nelson Mandela, who is a South African black nationalist. He says this so profoundly. He says, don't judge me by my successes. Judge me by how many times I fell down and I got back up. Oh, Lord, help me, somebody. Oh, yeah, that's powerful within itself. Don't let folks judge you by how many times you've been successful, but understand if you're successful because you've gone through the fire. You got knocked down, but you didn't give up, nor did you give in. You got up one more time, and you kept fighting. And even though you got knocked down, you got up again. The Bible says in Proverbs, a just man falls seven times, but it's something about the eighth time that when God is with you, when God has your back when God has you covered no matter how many times you fall know that you can get back up and go on and see what the end's gonna be oh yeah be encouraged saints don't worry about where you are oh you may not have everything that you want but God is still right there oh yes he is I want you to be encouraged this morning. Don't worry about the press. Don't you know a lemon don't produce the lemonade and make it sweet unless it goes through the press, even in sour mode, but it's when you add the ingredients of those things that make it sweet. Don't you know God is adding some stuff in your life while you're going through the press? Oh yeah, we want the goodness of God, but we don't want to go through the press. But stay in the press. Tell your neighbor to hang on in there. Oh, yeah. We need to hang in there. Stop crying. Stop complaining. It's not over just yet. Oh, yeah. God knows where you are. Matter of fact, that he was there before you even got into the situation. Oh, yes, he was. That's why he's omnipresent everywhere at the same time. When we get to a situation, God is already there. He just wants us to understand we just need to, be, we need to be of good cheer and keep our heads looking to the hill for what's coming our help. Oh yeah, stop crying all the time. Stop complaining because it ain't going your way. It's not what you want. Don't worry about those things. God's way is going to be done. Oh, yes, it is. Listen, our ability to respond to life's changes with joy proves we are growing in our walk of faith. Let me prove it to you. James says in chapter 1, verse 2, and verse number 3, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith is working some patience. Oh, yeah, God is working on you. Oh, yeah, you've been asking God to do some things for you, but now he's doing it for you. You don't like the way he's pressing you. You need to stop begging if you don't want to go through. God got you covered, I'm telling you. God has some steam that he's working inside of you that allowing you to go through to get you to where he's trying to take you. Oh, yeah. Therefore, we must not allow the press 
to create a sense of apathy in serving God because it's all working for our good. If you don't believe it, listen to the next part of James chapter 1, verse number 4. But let patience have a perfect work, that you be perfect and in time and wanting nothing. Oh, yeah, which means he's working this thing out for you. Just be patient in the process. Just hang on in there. And I say all the time, you even got to be like an old possum. Wrap your tail around the branch and swing with the wind. You just hang on in there because there's a brighter day on the horizon. Don't you give up and never give in. Hallelujah, somebody. Simply put, God is perfecting you. Turn to your neighbor and say, my best days are ahead of me. Now say it like you mean it. Turn to the other and say, oh, you may not believe it, but I'm telling you, keep watching. Oh, yeah, they coming. You better believe me. See, God allowed his people to go through some things in life. It's not always because you sin, church, and those who are watching by the airways. Sin is not always the factor in why you're facing some hardships. Now, some things are happening because of sin. Because the Bible emphatically teaches us what you sow is what you reap. But sometimes God allows you to go through some things because he's perfecting you. Oh yeah, you have to understand that being perfected means he has to remove some things in order to get some things in you. And in this, it's called the process. It's part of your maturing. It's part of you growing up and becoming the representative that God has called for you to become and be. So in this, I want to give you these quick four points and get out your way. Being a part of the press. Oh yeah, I'm glad I've gone through some things because it strengthened my faith. It's made me a better person. And going through some things, it causes me to understand that I needed God more so than I need myself and those around me. And going through some things, it caused me to recognize that I wasn't what I thought I was. But it made me fall on my knees and draw closer to him who is the everything of my life. And all of us need the everything. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. He's your will in the middle of your will. He is the I am that I am to your life. You need to learn how to depend on him. You need to start calling him out and stop crying to yourself. You need to let the world know that you're not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. You need to let the world know that you're going to run on and see what the end's going to be. You need to show up and shout about it. You need to let the world know he's not through with me just yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad this morning. For God, he's not finished with the church. Oh, yeah. We're seeing fires on the West Coast. We're seeing earthquakes in Haiti. We're seeing the hurricanes coming through the East. But I'm letting you know that God is still in control. So don't be shaken. Oh, yeah. Don't you be moved because he's doing a work. He has to complete what he's already spoken. He's already given us due warning through the gospels. He told us through his son Jesus that we're going to have earthquakes in diverse places. We're going to have all of these pestilence running across the land. He told us that these things must be. But he also warned that it's not the end just yet. All I'm trying to get you to know, it ain't over until God says that it's over. Hallelujah, somebody. So you need to get your head up. Keep on keeping on. Keep on pressing forward. You press, but you're not despair. Hallelujah, somebody. As we look at these four points, I want to talk about the scattering process. 
Hallelujah. The suffering process. Hallelujah. The strengthening process. Hallelujah. And the sanctifying process. All of these must be understood as believers of God's walk and God's word. Hallelujah. So let us look at the first process. The text says, as Peter writes here, he says the message is designed directly for a certain group of people. He speaks to it in the second verse. He says, uh, verse 1 rather, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. My sisters and brother, may I suggest to you that scattering is a good thing? I want that to sink for a moment. Because some of you don't believe that. Some of us don't believe that being scattered is not a good thing. I remember the story that my daddy told us about how we ended up in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Uh, my father's background is not from Vicksburg. But the original foundation of the Joneses are from Alabama by way of Memphis, Tennessee. They ended us up here in Vicksburg, Mississippi. We didn't start in Vicksburg. We began in Alabama, where God had to scatter us. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Spirit, preach this morning. See, God needs to put you where he needs you. It's not where you want to be, but it's where he designed for you to go and be. He had to scatter the Jones tribe, get them out of Alabama, move them to Memphis, Tennessee, and reposition us in Vicksburg because he had a plan that if they had to stay in Alabama, it would have never come to fruition being there and allow us to do it in Vicksburg, Mississippi. You need to understand that when God moves you from point A to point C, he has a perfect plan that you need to understand. You just need to learn how to walk in his plan. It's not because you've done something wrong, but it's because God is up to something. And he has you in mind. He's going to bless you as a result of you following the instruction. Oh, yeah. Listen, the scattering process is one of the most painful process to deal with. Why, Brother Preacher? Because it uproots you and moves you to another parameter in your life. It ranges from your emotions to your mental capacity to your physical walk and even to your spiritual growth. Each scattering process creates a void because we have become accustomed to being where we are. And the mood creates a great deal of pain. Oh, yeah. How y'all watch the color purple? Oh, yeah. In the movie, the color purple, you remember when one sister was kicked out by the father? Anybody remember that but me? You saw the pain between the two sisters where one was leaving? And the other had to stay. But in that, it was all a part of the process. Because in the end, both sisters won. Oh, y'all need to help me today. Y'all need to come on, go with me for a moment. I know you see where you are being scattered, the pain, the suffering, all the hardship that you're going through. It's painful. But you need to understand, God has a perfect plan. He's doing his work. He's working his plan because he's the God of our soul. He's working this thing out, and he's scattering your emotions. He's scattering your walk. He's scattering you on multiple levels so he can develop you and teach you how to trust him. He even when you can trace him. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to be a part of the scattering process. See, when Peter writes this, the correlation is between the Jews of old. When you read 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, you find out that God, he wipes out 10 of the tribes. 
Oh, yeah. He, because of their sinful ways, because they began to do even crucial things and critical things and cruel things to their own children. And because of those things, God destroyed those ten tribes. And he left two standing on the, on the mountaintop. Because if he had to wipe all of them out, we would be in trouble, church. Turn to your neighbor and say, we'll be in trouble. Oh, yeah, we'll be in trouble. I know some of you say, well, how will we be in trouble, brother pastor? I'm glad you asked me. Because if he had to destroy all 12 tribes, then it wouldn't give us leeway for Jesus to come through the tribe of Judah. Oh, you need to understand. See, God works out stuff. Even when you don't understand it, he's working things for your good. And you need to understand, in the scattering process, even though it's painful, God is working some stuff out for you. Which brings me to my next point. The suffering process. Found right here in verse number six. Listen to this. He says, wherein you greatly rejoice. What do you mean? I hadn't found anybody in the world today just rejoicing over pain, rejoicing over scattering, rejoicing over suffering, rejoicing because they're going through. Last time I checked, I see a lot of tears. I see a lot of folks crying. I see a lot of folks walking around hopeless. I see a lot of folks complaining. I see a lot of folks doing this and that. But Peter says to them, I know you've been scattered. I know you've been set apart. I know you've gone through some separation. He said, but rejoice in that thing. Learn how to rejoice. Make yourself be joyous. Put on a smile. Don't let the world know you bent down and you're pressed down, but let the world know that you still serve a God who's able. Oh, yeah. In the suffering process, this speaks to the idea of dealing with physical pain that creates emotional, mental, and some spiritual apathy. Learning how to deal with the suffering process creates opportunity to fill the voice that suffering creates. Don't you know that when you're going through something, it creates voice in your life? Amen, somebody. I can say amen. The loss of something precious to you. Oh, yeah. Loved one may have died. It's anything. Even the loss of things that you treasure. Let me tell you something. It's all a part of moving you from faith to faith, glory to glory. The suffering process is about designing you to understand that those things are temporal, but your faith must rise up and trust what is spiritual, and that's God Almighty. Hallelujah, somebody. The suffering process is designed to tell you that if God is able to bring you here, he's going to get you the way he's going. But most importantly, he's going to bring you back where he is. Oh, yes, it does. Listen, the text infuses the idea that joy is the offset that generates the ability to overcome the trials that have been created. Listen again to verse number six. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Peter says, I know you're going through something by being scattered. Some of you have been separated from your families. Some of you lost your parents. Some of you lost your children. And let me tell you something, I've never experienced the pain of losing my children. Because last, in the last administration, we saw firsthand how our country separated children from their parents. Don't you understand the agony, the pain of allowing yourself to be removed from your own loved one, your own loved one, your child? Do you understand the pain that goes with that? But yet God is gracious. Hallelujah. God is merciful. It may be you going through, but it's only temporary. That's why he said it the way he did. He says, though now for a season, which tells me it's not going to last forever. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. Listen. When my father died, that was the most painful death in my life. But it was only seasonal. Because God created a greater joy in my life. 
He gave me joy where I was sorrowful. He gave me hope when I was walking in despair. He raised up my bow down head and told me to keep on living. I'm letting you know that no matter who you are and what you're going through, God says it's only temporary. So be of good courage. Why, preacher, you tell me such thing? Because he's already overcome your situation. He did it for you. He didn't do what he did for you in your situation for me. He did it for you. And what you respond to in this moment defines where you are and you trust in him in your situation. Faith causes you to trust him in even the most painful states of your life. Let me say this to you. Can I say to you that when you're going through pain, it moves you into a state of fear? Watch this. Watch this. God had to show me this. And God says, I know fear is there, but you have a choice in the middle of all of it. He says, you can accept the fear or you can keep moving because fear is a choice. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of us choose to walk in fear because we think we can't survive and move on without what we lost. We believe the hype that we can't make and we can't live. And I remember the words of my own father. He said, God didn't ever teach, teach us to look and die, but he teaches us to look and live. When you learn the process of getting up and moving on, it moves you from operating in fear you can't say that, Pastor. Yes, I can. It's in the scripture. Let me prove it to you. Back in the Old Testament, there's a story of a king who was after God's own heart. The Bible declares that he saw this woman on the housetop, but it wasn't his woman. It belonged to somebody else. And yet, through the process of time, he had this woman brought in to him because he was the king. And he slept with this woman, and she became pregnant. And when he found out that she was pregnant, the Bible declares that he brought her husband in off the battlefield and told him to go in and have a relationship with his wife. But the husband refused, said that as long as his men were fighting on the battlefield, he would dare not go in and have an affair with his wife. So he sat on the court steps. And when David, the king who we're talking about, saw him, he called his commanders and told his commanders, put him into the hardest part of the battle. And the Bible declares that he was killed in the heatest part of the battle. So when the story goes on, the Bible declares that God sends the prophet Nathan to David. David is sitting there on his seat, the throne that God gave him. Nathan walks in and tells him the story about this man and his one of you lamb and how the king had all of these lamb in his passage and how the king took this man's one you lamb. And the scripture goes on as David is asked the question, what should you do about this man that has done such a thing? The Bible declares that David responded, he shall be killed. And Nathan responded, you are that man. Well, watch this. The scripture says that the child became sick. And David fell on his knees. He sat in sackcloth and ashes. He fasted while the child was sick. And then the child died. And the Bible declares that the servant was too afraid to come tell David that his child had died. Hallelujah. But David, because of the Holy Spirit, got a word of revelation by the Spirit that the child had died. He discerned the conversation between his servant. And he asked the question, what becomes of my child? And they informed him that he died. And I love what the Bible declares that David did. The Bible declares that David got up, went in and washed himself up 
hallelujah, cleansed himself, went into the house of God. He ate, revigorated himself, got back up, and got on back into the things that God called him to do. And all I'm trying to get you to understand, you just can't remain where you are. You got to learn how to be like David. Get up. Don't you lie there in despair. Get up. Don't walk away like you're walking in hopelessness. Get up. God got you covered. Get up. No matter how long you've been there, get up. He's your God. He's your Father. Get up. God got you covered. Oh, yeah. And some of you need to understand suffering is temporary. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Go on and bathe yourself. Put on the joy of salvation. Yeah. Put laughter back in your book. Yeah. Put a smile on your face. Yeah. When they trying to figure out how you're making it, yeah, tell them that God is still with me. And he ain't through with me just yet. Oh, yeah. You need to hear that this morning. Hallelujah, which moves me now to my third point, which is the strengthening process found in verse number seven. Listen to what verse number seven says as Peter writes to those who are scattered abroad. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, may be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Listen, it's important that you understand, church. Peter is speaking so prophetically here. He's trying to get us to see that a prophecy has been spoken over your land and over your life and over your home. You need to understand what Jesus said. He said, be of good cheer. Why do I need to be of good cheer, Jesus? Because I've already overcome this thing for you. I've already prayed for you. I've already dealt with your situation. I've already brought you out. I've already delivered you. I've already restored your joy. I've already given you what you need. I've already gave you hope for tomorrow. I've already done it for you. I've already done what I need to do, it is finished. Yeah. Peter offers a prophetic insight that gives revelation to those who have ears to what the Spirit is saying. Everything that you're going through have come to prove the genuineness of your faith, not my faith, but your faith. Hallelujah. When you learn to trust God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and lean not to your own understanding, it proves where your faith is. It proves that you're trusting him, you're leaning on him, and you're depending on him. And even if things come along, God still is still the still, the still, the still of your storm. Oh, yes, he is. He's still the still of everything that you're going. He's still on the throne. He's still God. He's still the author and the omega of your life. He's still the beginning and the end. He's still in charge. He's still everything that we need. He's still, he's still, he's still, he's still. Whatever you want, he's still God, and he got it. For God, in other words, can I get this to you? Can I drop this in your spirit real quickly? God is bragging on you. <laughs> Some of you don't receive that. But God is bragging on you. What do you mean bragging on me, brother pastor? You can't say that's true. Yes, I can, because the scripture said it. Well, where is it saying the scripture? When well, he bragged on Job. When Satan was coming to and fro the land, the Bible said that he presented himself with the sons of God. And God asked Satan, where you been? 
He said, I've been going to and fro the land. What's the point of you going to and fro? I'm trying to take your people out. He said, well, hold up. I want to know, have you considered my servant, Joe? In other words, God was bragging on Joe because he already knew Joe wasn't going to give in. Joe wasn't going to give up. Joe was going to fight the fight of faith. Joe was going to finish the call. Joe was going to do what was necessary. Even when his friends and family told him he ought to curse God and die, Joe made up in his mind for God I live and for God I'm willing to die. Even if I have to lose my children, even if I have to lose my stuff, God is bragging on me. God has his hands on me. I must finish what he started in me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you process, oh yeah, you're in the press, but you're not operating in despair. Which brings me to my last point. Oh yeah, sanctify, set aside, process. Which is found in verse 15 and verse number 16. Listen, he says, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manners of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I'm holy. Sisters and brothers, I close out my final thoughts with this. And you need to capture that God has called you to a place of being set apart. Oh yeah, holy is about sanctification. Sanctification is about being set apart. And when God has set you apart from the, the world's operation, stop trying to go back and be like the world. Stop trying to keep the world in your pocket. Let the world go and live for the creator of your soul. Why? Because he's right there with you through everything. But the world can care less about your pains, your sorrows, your heartaches, all that you're going to go through. But God promised that I'm right here even to the end of the age. So in this process, uh, there has to be a spiritual impartation uh, that creates an understanding of God's desire for us. As a result of him sanctifying us, we must be as he is because he has saved us with an intentional purpose. God don't just haphazardly do anything. He intentionally does what he do, and he's done what he did because he's that type of God. Everything that God does, he has a purpose behind it. You didn't come to God. God drew you to him because he was lifted up and he's already stated, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, when men, women, boys, and girls unto me. He says, come unto me all that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. I don't know about you, but I've learned how to cast down all these imaginations that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God that's in me. I've learned to beat my body into subjection and make it line itself up and do what God called me to do with everything and everybody realm and don't agree with what's going on. I've learned to make myself operate in peace because he is my shalom. He's my everything. I've learned to trust him when I have nowhere else to go. I've learned to depend on him because he's my hold and all. I'm learning how to lean on Jesus and I'm learning how to lean on the Lord. He's my everything I'm telling you. I'm learning how to cast my care to him because he cares about me. I'm learning how to keep my hand in the master's hand because he's my hope for tomorrow. He's my joy in all that I'm facing. I'm learning that because what he's taught me, I've learned to trust him. I've learned to depend on him. I've learned to give him everything. He is my all in all. So no matter what the world tells me, no matter what comes my way, I 
am in the press, but I'm not despairing. I have hope for tomorrow. God is my all in all. He's my everything. I trust him. I believe in him. I'm leaning on him with everything around me. His all in shovel. Thank you for being my God. Thank you, Lord, for being my hope. Thank you. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm glad this morning that he keeps on keeping me. He keeps on guiding me. He keeps on infilling me with his Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Well, he's been good to me, I tell you. When all the things around me seem to be failing in my life, God is. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for watching over me. Bless your name. You deserve the praise. And I'm not ashamed of your gospel. I'm glad that you saved me for such a time as this. Thank you. Woo! Do I have any witness in this place? If God been good to you, you may not like it. But why don't you stand to your feet and let the world know that God is still on your throne. He's good, I tell you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being so good. Thank you for being my hope. Thank you for being my joy. Thank you for being my love. Thank you for being my all in all. Thank you. Woo! Yeah, if I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to let the world know how good he is. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for watching over me. Yeah, thank you. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, I got up this morning. With Jesus on my mind, thank you for being so good. Thank you, Lord. Woo! We bless you. Thank you for just being so good to us. Thank you. 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 Put the super on the natural and make it supernatural. I'm encouraged. And I tell you to get encouraged. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being good to us. I'm pressed, but I'm not despair. Because the God that I serve, he's still in charge. Aren't you glad he's still in charge? Yeah. I'm glad this morning. Yeah. I'm glad he's still working this thing out. Yeah, hallelujah. He's working it out. Yes, he is. He's working this thing out. So hang on in there. Wherever you may be, don't allow fear to conquer you. Conquer fear because it's a choice that you live by. To walk in fear or to defeat fear. Hallelujah. And when you choose to overcome everything that you're going through, it shows and teaches the devil that he will not keep you in a state of fear. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And when you take that on and know what he's talking about, overcome all of your pains and suffering by defeating fear, 
where it is and walk in faith in Jesus name hallelujah God bless you we say to those who are watching by the airways we hope and pray uh, that you've been blessed by this message and that you trust in God with a God love and that you know you may be in depressed but you not despair God hasn't given up on you so don't you give up on God hang on in there and if by chance you don't know who this God is simply say father come into my life help me to know who you are draw nigh to me that I may draw nigh to you abide in me that I may abide in you and forgive me of all my sins that I've committed in your body have mercy on me if you do that and receive him as your Lord and Savior God will come in and he will save you from your sin you're born again by the power of God's words via the Holy Ghost God bless you God keep you until we meet again have a great day protect yourself through the storm and we will see you next week hallelujah hallelujah Bless the Lord in this place. Listen.